All right, so we're going to be looking at the non-legal responses today. Let's have a look at what those are. There are three in particular. Number one is the media campaign, both by the New South Wales government and also the major metropolitan newspapers. There are also some improvements to late night transport and the Thomas Kelly Youth Foundation. We're going to see that each of these had a different level of effectiveness. The first one I want to look at is the, um, the media campaigns. This is one run by the government. We'll have a look at this video in a moment. Uh, but this is, was it Danny Green, yeah. the, the boxer? So it's Danny Green, um, and he led this campaign, the one that said one punch can ruin lives. The idea that a lot of these, um, these things that were happening were, Sean McNeil, for example, was an MMA fighter. Um, Kieran Lovery just wanted to go out and, and punch someone. So the idea of getting someone like Danny Green along, say, look, uh, punching someone in the boxing ring is okay. You do not do it out when you go out for a drink. And that he would be someone that a lot of these men in particular who would go out and do these activities, activities, crimes, um, would be respected. And he's there saying, hey, one punch can kill. This is not where you do it. Hopefully that that would be more respected. But you also had a lot of campaigns by the Metropolitan newspapers. I think the Sydney Morning Herald ran a, a Safer Sydney campaign. The Telegraph ran an Enough is Enough campaign. Um, they both ran campaigns to encourage government action and also discourage violence on Sydney streets. You can see here Sean McNeil um, and Daniel Christie on the bottom right. New Year, same mayhem, uh, bottom left. Time to end the violence. They, uh, they ran a very strong campaign to get action by the government, but also to discourage violence by individuals. And it's generally considered to have been effective. So this is the, the Daily Telegraph. They said, well, thanks to our campaign, we've managed to introduce um, lockouts, mandatory minimum sentences. It's a big win for the community, but also being the Telegraph, massive victory for the Daily Telegraph. Okay, so it was seen as quite effective at getting action from the government. Um, I don't think we've seen the same level of um, violence in, in King's Cross um, as we've seen earlier. And they would argue that, hey, maybe it was our media campaign that led to this uh, this big awareness about King's Cross, which has led to a reduction in violence. Maybe it wasn't the government's um, legislation. That might have been the case. This is actually very hard to distinguish which one is which. Was it an awareness campaign that led people to reduce their violence, or was it the tougher sentencing? Uh, was it the lockout laws that led to a reduction in violence? Uh, it's actually very hard to tell them apart, but um, the Telegraph certainly thinks that they were successful, so we'll go with that. Uh, think about this. The Daily Telegraph considers the government's legal response to be a massive victory for their media campaign. What does this tell you about the effectiveness of the media campaign and the role of the media in achieving justice? Or let me rephrase that. Was the media responding to a public outcry or did the media result in a public outcry by fanning the flames? I don't have an answer to that, but it's something for you guys to think about. All right, let's look at late night transport. Uh, there, there were free buses introduced between King's Cross and Town Hall. They would run every 10 minutes between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday mornings. In other words, the mornings after Friday and Saturday nights. These were timetabled to link up with the night ride buses from the Sydney CBD out to Sydney's outer suburbs. You can see the map there of the, the night ride um, network. Down here on the bottom right, you can see one of those free buses. In terms of the effectiveness, those additional service saw minimum take up. You saw about two to five passengers per bus on average. On August 20, in 2014, an article in the Sydney Morning Herald called King's Cross Late Night Bus Service a Flop by Jake Solwick. Um, Solwick wrote, Friday night services are averaging 60 passengers. That's, that's in total. Saturday night services average 120 passengers. That's not per bus, that is total for the whole night. The free buses run every 15 minutes between 1 a.m. Um, and 5 a.m. Now, I've heard differing um, stats on whether it's every 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and provide capacity for more than 1,000 people to travel from King's Cross to Town Hall and Central. So we know they provide the capacity, 1,000 people. That's how much they would, uh, many people they'd be carrying if they were full. They're only carrying 60 to 120. So it generally hasn't been seen to be very effective from that perspective. They're not actually transporting that, that many more people. Our last non-legal response is the Thomas Kelly Youth Foundation. This is an NGO. Remember, when we're looking at non-legal responses, it's generally going to be non-government organizations and the media or media campaigns. They're your main two non-legal responses. It was formed following the death of Thomas Kelly by Thomas's family. 
It's run by Ralph Kelly now, Ralph Kelly being Thomas Kelly's father. It operates two programs, the Safe Spaces and Take Care Initiatives. It also communicates the need for behavioural change and a push towards changing Australia's drinking culture through education. Uh, let's look at what each of them do. The Safe Spaces program provides somewhere where young people can rest their feet, get rehydrated, charge their phones, get first aid, and find transport home or wait for friends. In addition, the Take Care Ambassadors are teams of three or four people. They walk around the city in King's Cross precincts at night, providing on-the-spot assistance to young people. This includes getting help to public transport or reconnecting with friends or handing out bottles of water. Uh, we're going to see these uh, two videos in a moment to see um, what they do. But in terms of the effectiveness, a City of Sydney report in April 2015 found these initiatives saved $364,000 per month in police and medical costs. So police costs and medical costs that don't have to be paid. When we talk about things like resource efficiency, this is a great example right here. A third, and that means every three months, that's a million dollars saved um, uh, by just having this NGO out on the ground to, to help people out. 